how do you create an environment where 128 radio systems can interact with each other, do that in a, in a way that's logistically possible? You know, key to any competition is, is fairness, right? We need to be able to test all of these radios in this competition in the same scenarios, you know, match after match after match. The only way that we could do that was to build Coliseum. Coliseum lets us take 128 real radio systems and actually mimic all of the interactions of these radio systems faithfully to what would happen in the real world. Coliseum emulates all of the bounces and echoes that a signal would naturally take out in the field. And because of this, it allows us to recreate the same scenario over and over and over again to create a fair, competitive environment for our competition. So just getting the Coliseum to turn on was heroic in its own right. Um, it was not obvious that you could, with high fidelity, mimic the real world uh, enough that you can actually play these types of competitions. So taking a snapshot of, let's say, downtown Austin, Texas, and capturing all of the physics of how waves interact in that environment, and then porting that into the digital world so you can plug hundreds, hundreds of radios in, inside of it, that has broad meaning for the Coliseum and for the challenge, but also for uh, every RF researcher uh, in the world. So these teams that we've been working with are all over the country, some of them are on the other side of the world, and they're able to remote into this just like a, a, a typical cloud asset, and so we have all the infrastructure that's required for them to be able to remote in, perform their operations, collect data, download data, uh, and so you know, basically a 24-7 operation for us. One of the hardest parts about making Coliseum possible is, is simply the amount of computation it takes to actually sort of compute all of those interactions between all of these radios and, and do it in real time. There's like a certain amount of computational capacity in an FPGA, and a good rule of thumb is you never allocate more than 50% of the computational yeah. capacity. When we first did the calculations, we needed to hit 90%. And so once we saw that, we said, well, we actually need to go off and we need to, we need to find the engineer that helped design the digital signal processing component of the FPGA, and we need to hire them because there's no other way we're gonna get all of this into that sort of small package. It's uh, about 21 racks of equipment that are sitting in a 20 foot by 40 foot room here at APL. We have, uh, we have about 170 uh, servers. We have 256 software-defined radios in there. Traditional radios transmit data over the air between their antennas. However, instead of broadcasting over the air, you can also send that same data over a wire and use a computer to emulate the effect of the environment on the signal. Using this method, you can model diverse real-world places, like mountain regions, cities, or open plains, all in a closed, controlled, experimental setting. SE2 software-defined radios consist of two key components, a radio and a server, which houses each competitor's software and the artificial intelligence that controls each radio's actions. Stacks of these radio and server pairs are then tied into a channel emulator. Coliseum extends this basic emulation construct to a massive scale. Each quadrant of Coliseum contains 32 competitor servers and radios. All four quadrants are then fully meshed together into a massive channel emulator, which calculates the effects of 128 radios transmissions on each other, an astounding 65,536 simultaneous interactions. Finally, DARPA adds the additional hardware necessary to conduct the SC2 competition, create the complex visualizations, and maintain competition integrity. For Mobile World Congress, in Los Angeles in 2019. We'll actually be picking Coliseum up from its home here at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab and bringing it to the LA Convention Center floor. So we're gonna actually move a server room onto the LA Convention Center floor. As if that's not scary enough, we have to be able to tear Coliseum down, ship it across the country and rebuild it without any breakage um, and, and get all of those connections just right. It's a tough challenge that lays in front of us, but, but one that I think we're up to. The SC2 finals are going to happen at uh, MWC Americas in October. And straight from the show floor, the uh, Coliseum hardware infrastructure is going to be shipped to the Costas Research Institute at Northeastern University. The DARPA vision is that Coliseum will be available on the internet 
managed as an asset for any business or any researcher to use if they have an innovative idea and they want to figure out how it will work. With the three buzzwords, uh, 5G, AI, and applications research, Coliseum fits in seamlessly with all three uh, areas. With 5G, what it provides is a neutral playground and a neutral venue for uh, uh, industry users, academic users, radio providers, edge providers, core uh, network providers, and cloud providers to do basic testing and research to validate fundamental research ideas that can then be incorporated into the next iteration of standards. Coliseum just fits into the vision perfectly as a stepping stone to take an idea out of a lab, move it into an emulation environment, and then provide a validation point for a researcher to really invest resources and time to take that experimentation out into the wild. If you're developing a complex system like a radio network, the ability to do repeatable experiments is essential. And the problem in the past has been to do a repeatable experiment with a radio network, you'd have to plug all those radios together in your lab. Very expensive to do anything with more than just a couple of radios. Coliseum, 128 radios. Now you can run a large complex test in a fully repeatable fashion. That's a real enabler for accelerating the development of these new radio technologies. This is a resource that's gonna be invaluable. We, we just cannot wait.